to the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Kirsty Farija from Feels Like Home Professional Organisers. And I'm Amy Ravel from Simply Organised. We can't wait to share with you all our tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home and family organised. If you'd like to engage with the podcast further, you can find us at The Art of Decluttering on Facebook. Let's get started. You've joined us for episode 21 of the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're so excited today that we get to talk to you about decluttering and organising your children's books. Children's books are so beautiful. I oh, know. They're so hard to part with sometimes too, aren't they? They are because they like passing seasons. When I got rid of, you know, when you start off with those board books mm-hmm. where the pages are like chewable even. <laughs> And when you start to part with those, it's like, oh, my baby's growing up. Mm. And then when you hit your first chapter book, oh, like when my kids first read their first chapter book, it was like such a proud parenting moment. Like no other child in the history of the world had ever (laughs) progressed from picture books to chapter books. My children were geniuses. (laughs) You love it. (laughs) Did you and Simon read your children books before bedtime? Was that part of your family routine? I know not every family does it, but was that part of your routine with your kids? Yes, we did, but not as religiously as other parents. And so that was always a guilt parenting guilt of mine that we didn't make it a habit every night. (laughs) Isn't it incredible? We make this like... That's what a good parent looks like. I know, it's ridiculous. Is reading a child a picture book every single night. I know, it's ridiculous. So I'm, I'm learning to let go of some of that guilt. <laughs> but And if you're listening here today and you feel that guilt, let it go. you don't need to. Let it go. Do something out of the passion for it, not because you feel like you should. Yeah. So we love reading books to our kids. We, always, we have always read to our kids and both of our kids love reading uh, love reading books and love having books I've read to them still at eight and six like if I could sit down and read to my kids every night they would be happy as Larry however our family life has no, not always been conducive to carving out half an hour to an hour of reading because you know what kids are like just one more book please just one more one chapter more just one more chapter yes so it hasn't always been our a daily thing but we, yeah, our kids love it. And I love kids, beautiful kids, um, storybooks. So it is a hard thing to let go of sometimes. A perfectly written children's storybook speaks to the children but speaks to the adult as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted to be a children's storybook author. Did you? You still yeah, can. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I could. You're right. Cal and I talked about it many times over the years because he's a great illustrator and um, he does a little bit of work as an illustrator, which lots of people don't know about my dear husband. He's a and man I always, with many, many, many talents, your husband. He is. He's incredible. Um, he hasn't ever illustrated a children's book, but we've always talked about could we write a series of children's books and I would write the content and he would draw the pictures. And you could do a maybe one day book. For, for children, children. <gasps> don't tempt me don't attempt the overachiever in me with a new job <laughs> <laughs> you're a cruel cruel woman <laughs> i am a loving friend who is trying to encourage goodness in you my friend oh now do you know what i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm gonna write that on my to-do list for today to think about oh, no sorry Cal. decluttering children's book I love that idea, Kirst. Oh, I reckon it would be awesome to help kids overcome the mindset challenges that as adults we all have, but children, if this decluttering habit, these clutter building habits start young. As all of us know, if we have children, we can see that in some of our children and in other children, they're happy to let things go. Yeah, and I think probably some of the lessons I've learned out of doing my children's declutter sessions. Oh, you've started something in me, Kirsten. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, everybody, (laughs) listeners, look out for Amy and Cal's books. (laughs) Kirst, did your children have trouble letting go of books when they'd outgrown them? Uh, Not so much, actually. Our kids have been, as a general rule, pretty good at letting go of their stuff. We do keep some of their very favourite board books um, and then we have 
even now we've got books in our we limit we definitely have limits on their books but we definitely have books in their bookshelves that they could probably let go of now but last time we asked them to let go of they weren't ready to so and that's fine it's a process and not everything has to be got rid of on the first go and for children there's a great joy in reading over books and rereading them and being familiar with the characters and the storyline and actually something that um, my son's teacher taught me when he was in back grade two there's a great confidence that comes from knowing the words and being able to know in advance kind of the flow of words and yet be able to read them again and again so if you've got children and you're frustrated because they want to read the same book every night or they want you to read them the same book every night don't despair that's actually them um, refining and building their reading skills and that's actually a really important thing for them to do as they're developing did you ever skip over pages when you were little when they were little oh i didn't <laughs> try, i didn't did you try to I was, no I, <laughs> I think because i'm such a book lover that the joy in the story was so much for me that i didn't want to skip pages but i would pick books that were shorter no doubt about it like there were some nights where like, can we read this book? I'm thinking, oh, there's too many words on these pages. How about we read this one instead? <laughs> I love kids, how they know the stories, even when they're really little, you know, and they read familiar, you read to them familiar stories. Like they're like, oh, you accidentally skipped a page. I'm like, <laughs> yes, it was totally an accident. <laughs> I'm reading a book to my eldest who's 11 at the moment called Wonder. I don't know if you, there's actually a movie coming out yes, about it and it is it. such a beautiful book. Like it is all about inclusion and people who are different and it just has the most beautiful values and morals in it. So I'm reading it to him. This is our second time through. So I read it to him first, maybe 12 months ago. He's read it to himself since. And he said to me the other night, mom, can we read Wonder again? And I said, yeah, of course we can. So we read a couple of chapters a night because the chapters are really short. Something I do do, because it's an American book, is I change some of the words as I go to make it more relevant to him. So when it says like elementary school, I just change it to primary school. Or when it says, you know, senior school, I just change it to high school. And I change some of the words around. Like it says popsicle, I say icy pole. But now that he's read it for himself, he's like, Mum, that's not the word that's written there. <laughs> and, you know, he's lying on the other end of the bed, but he knows. I know. I've done that with Roald Dahl books. I've read um, a whole collection of the Roald Dahl to my son. And there are some really horrible words in those books. There are. Like in the twits and Yeah, stuff. and they're called, oh, they yeah. call themselves, like they call people idiots and stupid. And they're not words that we say in our home. And they're not words that I want my son to say. And certainly didn't when I read them to him in kindergarten. So luckily in kindergarten, when he wasn't reading it for himself that level of book, I would just change the words. But now that he's reading it himself, he's like, <gasps> Mum, they call people stupid or they keep call people the I word. <laughs> oh, that's the cutest, the I word. <laughs> oh, that's when really cute. When he was cute. first learning how to read or how to sound out words, he'd go, Mum, the E word. And I'm like, what's the E, the word? E word? And he goes, idiot. <laughs> Oh, that's really like, sweet, that's Ollie. That's really cute, Bob. But just so you know, it's spelled with an I. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you say it like idiot. <laughs> but we don't use that word, so don't say it. <laughs> I remember once we used to take my children to story time at the library every single week. And there was the most amazing librarian that would run story time. And we just fell in love with it. Like we'd buy her Christmas presents every year, fell in love with it. <laughs> And one year, oh, sorry, one week we went to, so we would borrow books every week and then return and whatever. And one week we'd seen this special section in the library and all the books had a S on it. And we're like, oh, these must be special. And so we borrowed, um, you know, five or six out of this section and they're books I hadn't really seen before. I didn't know how I'd miss them. Got them home and I can't remember what the S stood for, but it wasn't they were special. all... It was all books around when your mummy and daddy die, which is a great book to have, but freak out your three-year-old <laughs> when every book they wanted to read that week had a parent die in it. It's like watching a Disney movie, really. Oh, so I just ended up just taking them back early and swapping them out because I just felt like the kids were getting really upset. But totally. 
what I want to say in that is that if you are facing a particularly um, a situation you don't feel prepared for, you don't have the words for, do consider going to your local library and asking your librarian if there are children's books that um, help deal with that issue. Even if it's the loss of a pet or a friend moving away, there are some really amazing books out there that can kind of give you the words to say and give you the kind of story to normalise or know how to deal with emotions. So just make sure you do use your local librarians as well as your local library to, you know, broaden your range of topics that you read to your children about. That's so awesome. I love one of my favourite websites is A Mighty Girl. Have you ever heard of that website? Oh, yeah. yeah, Yes, never visited it. So A Mighty Girl has an awesome catalogue of books on various different topics and it's not just for girls it is for boys as well awesome for teaching girls about um, stem subjects so they'll have um, site you know women scientists and women engineers and women mathematicians and it's an american website so i'll just use that as a caveat <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but also histories books um, so you can choose any number of categories and it will tell you which books that you can buy on booktopia or you know any any website or go like as you said and as we spoke about in our books episode going to the library and requesting your library to get them but they'll be on topics of racism and um history um of slaves in america or um and they're just really great books and a really great catalog of knowledge and they're um, sectioned out by age category as well. So yeah, if you, fantastic. yeah, so if you want to teach your kids about sci- women scientists or scientists in general, um, but as I said, it is targeted more to girls and um, getting more books into the hands of girls that are related to stuff that have got female protagonists in them potentially um but it will have a preschool range and then a early primary school range and then a senior primary school range and then a senior school range so it is a fantastic resource if you um want to um diversify your reading to your children i totally recommend going there to diversify that's really cool, Kirst. I love when we broaden the topics of books that our children read. I find that Scholastic actually do quite well at that with their book clubs. Now, I get it, like they're trying to raise money for schools and it's a business, but it also does broaden the range of types of books that you would read. And it usually has in their books that range from um, like an action book that's maybe comic style right through to novels that older children or more established readers could read. Where I find it's Um, challenging as a minimalist parent is when my children come home now they've reduced it to every quarter now scholastic it used to be every month they come home and they have circled books that they want to buy and there's like $15 worth this quarter and $35 worth each next quarter do you have a way of dealing with the scholastic book club orders or how do your family manage it yeah we treat the scholastic book club orders a bit like junk mail they don't enter our house. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what we've done because we used to do that. They would bring them home and we'd chuck them straight in the bin and I did start feeling bad when they were like, oh, but mum, this book looks really good. So now what I do, and it's totally changed how we view the Scholastic um, mail when it comes in, is I give them a Sharpie each and they go through and they're allowed to circle every single book that they would like, every single book. And then we take the Scholastic order to the library And we borrow them. Excellent. I love it. (laughs) That's a great idea. So we walk in with our catalogue and we go, can we present this book? Can we present that book? Can we present that book? That is excellent. (laughs) I'm going to do that because I do not want to hamper my kids' love of reading. They absolutely love reading. And, you know, for Christmas, and I'm sure we'll talk about this (laughs) on one of our Christmas episodes, but for Christmas, one of the things that we always buy our children is a book. So yes. I, yeah, Scholastic and book clubs are a great idea for inspiring children. We just, um, I mean, the other, I think, other idea that you could do for the Scholastic book club is if you are wanting to, you know, raise money for your school and support your school is choose one and let the kids buy one and then ask them to get rid of another one. Because the thing with books and the reason that we're here on this podcast is to help you get rid of things <laughs> as well yeah. as talking about our love of um, 
parenting and our love of our children and our love of reading, but we want to help you to minimize um, the books that you do have in your home. So a great tip is one in, one out. And if you want to go even further, one in, two out. (laughs) It's a great idea. And you could, even if your children do want to order books, is to buy one each quarter, but say to your children, you can pick it now, but you get it at Christmas Mm. so that, you know, there's that anticipation and excitement about, you know, when Christmas comes, they get some new books. More from us in just a few minutes. Don't forget to visit our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au and sign up for our bonus episode that's not so secret anymore. We've done episodes on linen cupboards, toys, wardrobes, pantries, jewellery and so many more. So if you're new to the art of decluttering, you'll find loads of great tips like this one from the episode we did on entryways. We keep hooks right next to our door for our keys. Mm. So that coming and going, we put our keys straight away. So if you haven't got somewhere to store your car keys, you can go as simple as what Kirsty was saying, and that's just putting a basket somewhere near the door or on top of something that you know where it is and just make sure they always go in there. And for us, that's just hanging them up near the door. And now back to the podcast for so many more tips and tricks. We've just purchased, Kirst, the box set of the Narnia series oh. and I'm so excited. So I said to the boys that I'll read them that together. Usually reading for us is we read with one child. They really like that one-on-one time. Yes. But I said to them, I want to do it as a family because I want to read the Narnia series too. Yes. Yeah, so my brother's. Oh, so one of my first memories of my dad reading is actually reading me the Narnia series when I was like really, really young. And he must have done that with my younger brothers as well. Now, my one of my younger brothers had recurring nightmares about <laughs> Narnia. <laughs> about lions and witches yes. and frozen he, and wardrobes you never get out yeah, of. Yeah, he's actually like scarred (laughs) scarred (laughs) from the narnia series and my dad insisting on reading it to him (laughs) that's funny i think hopefully my nine and eleven year olds will cope just oh yeah i think it is actually (laughs) aimed at that not at four and five year olds which is probably when my dad i it is a very early memory for me so i think i was quite young because my mum and dad are avid readers as well and really wanted to instill in us a love of reading so my dad was probably haphazard in his reading just like I am because I'm a lot like my dad but he probably did read I know he read the Narnia series to us or at least the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and um yeah he they did read to us so that's so nice what great memories there are of reading together with people yeah and I love we do the same um and I've been a bit slack in doing it for Emily because I certainly started reading chapter books to Oliver in in kindy which is prep first year of school whatever you call it in your state is that foundation in Victoria now isn't it it is foundation prep in Queensland and kindy and anyway crazy why can't we all just call it the one thing so everybody knows what we're talking about anyway kindergarten my daughter's in kindy Amelie's in kindy and when Oliver was in kindy I started reading the Roald Dahl series to him and I haven't done that for Amelie. She loves reading but she's not actually up to reading her self chapter books yet and she actually has a lot shorter attention span when it comes to book as than Ollie does and that's probably again parent guilt coming in probably because we weren't as uh, good at reading to her as we were with Oliver. <laughs> but I'm just going to put it down to her personality. Not my fault at all. Nothing to do with no, me. No, it's totally not your fault. No, nothing to do with <laughs> She's you. She's probably a lot like Simon in that regard. <laughs> Short attention span. <laughs> well, when it comes to books, whereas, you know, Ollie and I get stuck at Ollie is like avid, avid reader. Like he's reading, you go into his bedroom and he's on the floor reading a book. So it warms yeah, my heart. That. I love it, love it, it love does. it. Except I feel sorry for Emily because she will be like my sister. She'll be like, come and play with me. And Ollie will be like, no, I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice though, to read, curl up and read in a corner. Um, I know I just wanted to quickly talk about storage of children's books and 
um, how chaotic it can get so quickly because children, if you hadn't noticed, parents are not particularly awesome at putting their own books away on the bookshelf or like you intended. They're certainly not going to put them in size order. They're certainly not going to alphabetize them. <laughs> You'll actually be lucky if they even put them back on the shelf. Amy, so I'm not sure how many adults actually alphabetize their books. I know there's some I, people out there and I'm sure you would be one of them, but not everybody I'm does. Not, I'm totally not. <laughs> I, I used to be. Yeah, being, you used to be. be honest. I used You've to let be, that now, go. Yeah, now it's all about efficiency and not about perfection. But let's talk about children's <laughs> bookshelves and ways to store books for children so that you don't feel like every night you have to go to a bookshelf and tidy it up. Give us, hit me with your best shot, Kirst. Hit me with the best shot. I think for kids that what we've done in our house, we actually had their bookshelves up high so that it wasn't actually accessible to them when they were toddlers, like when they were really little and just, you know, when they're that age and they just go in and just rip everything out. Everything goes on the floor. Yeah, everything goes on the floor. So when they were that age, we would actually, well, you know, probably when they were that age, they were on the floor, like on a low bookcase. And so it wasn't so hard for them. But I remember having a dear friend over and getting really frustrated at Oliver because he'd just go and wreak havoc in the playroom with the books and all the toys. And she just took, and I was whinging to her about it. And she goes, Kirsty, he's 18 months old. That's what they do. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> like, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> like, um, but as they got older, like, then we did move them up higher so that they weren't something that they would just go and do themselves and wreak havoc in. They were up a little bit higher so that they could reach them, but they couldn't rip everything out. So, um, and now we have them in their room and we have some in the playroom and we don't care about the order. We don't care about where they go, but they're really good at putting things back where they're, where they're meant to go. And like they don't do it, put it back in size order and that's totally fine. <laughs> what about you? What's your recommendation? Yeah, well, I think, you know, with adult books, we tend to stand them up with the spine facing out. I find that for children, that's, like a dexterously difficult thing to do. Mm. Could that be our word for the week? Dexterously yes. difficult thing to do. Um, and so I've seen work well in some families where the books are just placed in a basket. And so kids can almost flick through them. Like you would flick through a filing system and find the book that they want. And it's just spine up. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I've seen other people use those standing frames where you kind of have all the books on display mm. like a library, library. would. Yeah. Yeah, so I've seen those work well. Um, for my children, they're, um, we've got lots of them standing up normally with the spine out, but I also have area which they're free to then just stack their books. So if they're like a, a large at the moment reading the Ando series again and he just stacks them. So rather than trying to – because it's annoying for kids when you stack a book the right way, like the way a library would, and then it just like falls over because they don't have bookends and – you know, how do you manage that? So stacking them up in a pile can actually be a good solution for that. So I think what I want to encourage people to do is just think creatively about how you store children's books. Don't feel like it has to look like a display house or it has to look like a library. Make a way that will work so that your children can be responsible for grabbing their own books, reading them, and then being able to pop them back where they belong without ending up on the floor. Excellent. Excellent advice. Now, I wanted to talk about how do you let go of children's books? We know we've spoken about how much we love some children's books, but have you ever received a book or bought a book even and started reading it and gone, oh, I don't even like this book or the children never, ever choose to read that book or you've never chosen to read the book or you've read the book and you've gone, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just op shop them so I'm actually inspired I've got both my children homesick today so this afternoon guess what we're going to do <laughs> we're going to do another declutter of their bookshelves because it's probably been six to 12 months since we've gone through that um, I don't find it difficult to get rid of most children's books and we probably haven't even kept any special ones over the years we just love books so much that the constant flow is actually the joy for us rather than keeping ones that they loved as children. So 
any then we don't have any board books left or any of those baby books left and they're quite happy to get rid of books they're not reading because they know I think secretly that that makes room for oh. new books to borrow from the library yeah, and I've got to say like my husband is the bomb at taking the children to the library like it's not me that does any of that he's the one that really encourages them um, to try new books and he's got this great relationship with the ladies at the library they all know him by name and he all knows them and they go in once a fortnight and he's like hi whatever your name is and they're like hi Cal and it's really cute I love it yeah. so use your local library people and your librarians as I said before are wealths of knowledge absolute wealths of knowledge so make sure you use them so that you have more decluttered room in your home, but you still have new books coming. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, we did keep, we have kept some of their favorite books and our favorite books from when they were little, uh, just so they, and there's just a few of them, they fit in their uh, memento boxes and it's just so we can pass them on to them when they get older and so that they might read them to their children if they choose to have them. Like The Hungry Caterpillar. Like Oh, that was the largest first book that he memorised. Yeah, same with Oliver. We've got a video of him reading it at two. Oh, yes, my it's the goodness. cutest. So, though, like, and just a few really sentimental books we've kept. Um, and then, yeah, I, we get rid of books fairly easily as well. Or I should say Simon gets rid of books fairly easily. I'm all like, oh, but I love reading that book, <laughs> particularly picture books, because that's the, the stage. Yeah. We've got heaps and heaps of picture books still that we love reading to the kids or the kids love us reading. Like we'll sit down, you know once yeah, a week really nice. and say okay go grab five books each and let's read some pitch books so um that's really nice and there, there's some every time we go to declutter some still get kept <laughs> because I'm like no I really love that book it's staying and if you're reading it cursed that's exactly what the purpose is because you don't have all the clutter of every picture book you've ever had you're now down to the ones that you really love so when you say pick a picture book to the kids they're getting one that you want to read them and that you know is of great value yes yes I do have I, we've got some books called Ollie books which I wonder if I will be able to let go of just because they're named after my son or <laughs> not named are after. they actually named after no your son or is it a coincidence? it's a coincidence but the dog's right. name is Fred which is actually um, Oliver's grandfather's name so it's just so cute <laughs> I get that we've got one book that my boys love it's called shoes from grandpa and my dad is a shoe importer yes. and the main character in the book is jesse which is the same name as my oh. boy and so that book has a lot of special meaning for us oh yes I'm, so i think that and there will be some picture books that i will find hard to let go of because they are some of our favorites and that's okay you don't need to we're not here to tell you to let go of everything it's about making sure you keep what you love and love what you keep and kirsty something that i've seen quite a few of my clients do is keep their christmas books in with christmas decorations mm. rather than out with all their ch pitch children's picture that's books that's exactly what we do oh is yes! it i love it it's really nice because when it becomes christmas season you pull out these books and there's like oh my gosh i remember this book from last year and i really love the way of doing that that keeps it a bit special and then it's packed up again and put away for 11 months of the year and then pulled out and i just think that's really clever i've seen quite a few people do that now yes i love it i love that and we have them wrapped and that's meant to be an advent thing like that you unwrap well, that's one. a lot of effort my friend uh well some some haven't been unwrapped for a couple of years because <laughs> we forget to do you know how there's all you know this whole wishful thinking i am not immune to yeah. it my friends i am not immune to it <laughs> <laughs> the person you want to be versus the person that you yes, are exactly so what's our takeaways from today amy well, I think make time to read to your children or make time to encourage your children in their love of reading. I think my biggest takeaway for you today is to use your local library instead of feeling like you need to buy children's books all the time because they grow up so fast. So use your library, use the resource of your librarians and have books, but you only need to keep them for a couple of weeks and then send them back for some fresh ones. What about you, Kirst? What do you want our friends to take away today? Just to be creative in the way that they store their books and keep their books and to be really um, thoughtful about the books that they do let go of. Like if you've never read it to your kid, read it and let go of it. Like 
let things go to make room. I love what you said, that your boys are inspired to let go of things, to make room for more things. I love that. What a beautiful concept. So that is my takeaway. So we hope that you have enjoyed listening to our episode on kids books. If you feel inspired, of course, you can let your children listen to this episode and hopefully they can take a little bit of the initiative in decluttering, organising their bookshelves. Amy and I both do sessions with kids and we love working with kids. So if you want us to come in and work with your kids on how to let go of their books and how to pass books on and how to be inspired to head to the library more often, then call us and we'd happily come in and work with you and your children on letting go of some kids books. So friends, thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you have an amazing week. Enjoy reading to your children and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, do a friend a favor and share this episode with them so that they too can learn the art of decluttering. You can find me, Amy, over at simplyorganized.net or on Facebook at simplyorganizedpo. You can find me, Kirsty, over at feelslikehome.net.au or on Facebook as Feels Like Home PO. Don't forget, you can see the show notes in your podcast app. So if there's anything you want more information on, then check it out there. If you love what you hear, we would really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes and you can always subscribe to us. We hope you've enjoyed listening and that you've learned some great tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home organized. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. Music.